Members of the crow family, the corvids, can be found all over the world, a testament to their adaptability. Corvids used to be revered in most cultures for their intelligence, but as civilization progressed, their image changed. Corvids cavorted on gallows and battlefields and plucked the eyes from corpses. Hitchcock's film, The Birds, only served to confirm their bad reputation. Biologist Christoph Vogel of the Sempark Ornithological Station Ravens and crows are large black. They have a rough voice, congregate in flocks and eat carrion. These are too many negative characteristics for people today, who no longer have the unspoilt perspective of earlier generations. The walls of the moated castle of Halville have probably housed a jackdaw colony since it was built in 1200. During the Millennium Restoration work, care was taken to preserve their breeding places, because unlike other members of the crow family, jackdaws are well liked. A jackdaw pair are building a nest in the shaft of a medieval toilet. To document their nesting, breeding, hatching and feeding, cameraman Frank Mesmer has installed a black box with a small camera instead of the usual toilet lid. The jackdaw pair is upset at first, eyeing the unfamiliar situation on their bedroom ceiling suspiciously and taking flight. But soon afterwards, the couple are no longer disturbed by the live broadcast and continue enthusiastically building their nest. Besides branches, moss and leaves, a paper napkin from the nearby cafe is obviously perfectly acceptable as building material. From now on, visitors to Halville Castle can see exactly what the couple are up to in their nest, and if they're lucky, even witness them copulating. Like most corvids, jackdaws are monogamous, staying with one partner all their life. Jackdaws have been coming and going in and out of this castle near Starnberg since time immemorial. The castle belongs to the dynasty of the kings of Bavaria. Princess Augusta of Bavaria, a biologist and behavioral scientist, spent part of her childhood here with her grandparents. My grandfather had jackdaws at home who could speak. I was fascinated by them and wanted to raise one myself. I often hoped to find one that had fallen out of its nest and was injured, but it never happened. It was a lucky coincidence that at the University of Cambridge I was assigned to a newly established behavioral research group and was able to do my PhD on jackdaws. Augusta of Bavaria is now doing research for the University of Oxford, part of it still on jackdaws. She knows all her birds in the aviaries, and vice versa, as is plain to see. In her recent publication, Augusta of Bavaria demonstrates that the jackdaw pays very careful attention to where a member of the same species, or even a human, is looking. He wants to find out what the other person is looking at. What he's paying attention to is very important. Jackdaws are very sensitive to eyes. I observed that by chance. Wherever I looked in any direction, they watched very closely. I tested my hypothesis with an experiment, and it was really the case. It's extraordinary how sensitive jackdaws are to human eyes. Maybe because they also, as you can see here, have extremely bright eyes in their black faces. They can also move their eyes quite powerfully, as with our eyes. We have a white eyeball and a relatively dark iris, which is why it's easy to see where we're directing our eyes. 
And with jackdaws, we can also easily see where they're looking. Augusta of Bavaria demonstrates the experimental arrangement with a man the jackdaws don't know well. Now, please look straight ahead at this point here. It takes quite a while for the jackdaw to approach the treat. And then again it takes quite a while. until it finally grabs the worm and immediately flies away. But if the man looks away without changing the position of his head, the jackdaw comes and gets the bait without any hesitation. Jackdaws perceive positive signals from people they know, like the researcher. Whether these are signs with the index finger or with the eyes, The question behind all this is whether animals can think and if they can think about what others think, whether they have a so-called theory of mind, whether they think about what others' intentions are, what they know, what they don't know, what they can see, whether animals can do what we humans do automatically. In addition to testing jackdaws, Augusto of Bavaria is working with New Caledonian crows. These are known to use tools and can even make them themselves. This amazing phenomenon was studied by a group at Oxford University led by Christian Rutz and Alex Kaczelnik. The use of tools is actually very rare and unusual behavior. Tool use in the animal kingdom is so rare that we have long believed that only we humans are capable of it. And we have long defined being human by saying that we are the ones who make and use tools. It has already been proved that some species of monkeys use tools, now it's the crow's turn. A simple experiment in the aviary shows how cleverly and inventively these new Caledonian crows use tools. In a presentation in St. Gallen, Rutz shows impressively how Betty the Crow manages, under scientifically controlled conditions, to make a suitable tool from a straight piece of wire at the third attempt. There is a clear plastic tube, and at the bottom of this tube there is a small bucket with a handle. And in the bucket there is a food reward. And of course the crow wants the reward. So as you see, the bird initially pokes around with a straight wire and tries to lift up the bucket. It doesn't work. Now it takes the wire out, sticks it into the sticky tape, and bends a hook for itself. <laughs> now it has a wonderful tool to get the bucket with. Two things are very important. One is its spontaneous behavior. It's not a circus trick. Not learned, but spontaneous behavior. Secondly, these crows use tools in the wild to get food. 
Diese Vögel benutzen Werkzeuge im Freiland für den natürlichen Nahrungserwerb. Meanwhile, May is here. Halville Castle is being visited by a group of motorcyclists. Our jackdaw male is still busy carrying food to the nest and feeding his wife. The bikers are of course eager to see what's happening in the nest. And what should they see but the first throat stretched up, two for the time being. Giant beaks are begging for food. For now, the mother takes care of the feeding alone. If he wants to make a contribution, he has to feed the female first. A few hours later, there are already three. No, four. The last born will not survive, but the weather is favorable and there are enough insects for three chicks to survive. Two days later, they have visibly put on weight, but the real test will follow in a month's time when they leave the nest. Foxes, martens, birds of prey will be lurking, and Halville Castle is surrounded by water. This means that some young birds will drown during their first flight, but some will manage to take to the sky.